Jordan. So uh, just this week, I had multiple customer calls uh, that wanted to discuss their type library replacement uh, for several reasons. One reason that came up, obviously, is their uh, aging uh, LTO drives. They have to go to the next uh, version, whether it's you know LTO 8 and 9, and there are other, obviously, on, on the horizon. Uh, then, obviously, the slow and cumbersome process to archive that data. And, uh, and lastly, you know, not only the slow archiving, but also slow retrieval from the tape and the manpower that it takes to do the archiving and retrieval versus them working on something uh, more productive. So how would object storage help them solve this problem? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a pretty legit question in the modern, the modern era, right? So everybody's fighting for more, more eyeballs, more viewers, um, you know, there's more areas that you have to get footage to. So uh, speed, uh, speed to market, speed to the data, it's very important. Uh, organization of the data, understanding where it is, uh, and then the, the, the least amount of time spent working on your infrastructure, the better, right? So that, that, that is obviously why a lot of people went to the cloud in the early days. What they didn't expect is that cloud would be so expensive. So as we're, as we're wading into the more of the hybrid workflows, as, you, as, as a lot of people call it, um, we're looking at things like bringing in object storage to sit in that, in that instance. So you get the benefits of the cloud at the cost price that's a little bit like a little bit more beneficial for people. So let me bring up a diagram real quick. Uh, look at the typical way this kind of breaks down when you look at where a tape sits in the workflow. All right. So, <clears throat> so here we have a, from left to right, we're looking at your editors, your workers, your, your graphic artists, um, primary storage right below it. So this could be tier zero, tier one, any of those kind of typical fast tier storage. Usually it's a, it's fairly pricey. Um, and then you have your asset managers, your transcoding, automation, uh, a lot of different options in this type of workflow here. And then things typically move off the tape or some type of archive. This could technically even be cloud as well. So um, we're sitting basically in that this this tier here. So if we move tape off and we say maybe we're going to bring this down to uh, a cold archive level and we bring in swarm object storage. Now you have a little bit more modern architecture. You have uh, a significant increase in speed coming off of these tiers here, essentially off of technically but off of the say the flash based here. So you could also shrink this down. So now, you know, most people don't really need more than 100, 200 terabytes in, on average for that tier one storage. So that can be a little bit more cost effective. You can keep just what you need to work uh, and then have immediate access to the files that you haven't touched in a while or the files that you're like, now you need to monetize. There's some reason you need to bring it back. There's something that happened in current events that you have to bring a file to. You're not waiting through a ton of tape or going back to some like library or some literal salt mine to pull up a tape to bring it back to your ingest. It's just right there, it's readily accessible. Um, and it's also based on object. So there's metadata embedded in your objects now. So you have actually access to that. It's not sitting in a separate database. It's not locked away. It's actually on the file itself that moves with the file. Um, the other uh, inherent advantage uh, that we have here with Swarm is that you're not tied to legacy hardware. So as things advance, as technology increases, you could you could piecemeal and add different um, different configurations of hardware as the generations change without doing any type of big data migration. All right. No, this is this is great. So just quickly to reiterate what you just mentioned, uh, the advantages of object store versus tape. And as, as you said, obviously there is a sp space and a place for tape, but uh, going into modern workflow, obviously you no longer limited by the capacity and the expansion uh, of the tape library. That's where uh, uh, object storage like Swarm would come into play. Uh, obviously retrieval times are substantially faster, not well, archival and retrieval times are substantially faster. You, so you can reuse, re-monetize that content. And, and, and lastly, the, the content management is a lot more flexible having the ability to search that content use that rich metadata uh is very very useful to your editors and producers right yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. The, the other thing i don't think i mentioned too is the two different sites you could or the two different sites on this diagram but this could be anywhere this could be a hub and spoke model so you know this could sit in, in almost any geography in the world you know just obviously depends on your connections you can and have here and this could be going off the tape um so it's very flexible in that sense more so than you'd have, which is a big tape library. Right, right. No, th this is great. This is great. So I uh, just kind of end on this uh, subject for today. If anyone has any additional questions regarding tape replacement, 
and uh, object storage in general. We'll provide a content information and we'll see you guys soon.